Jam on toast! Hey everybody, welcome to the Jam. I'm Cameron. Today this toast is to Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Now this is a video response for the Geek and Sundry Movie Club headed up by Miss Holland Farkas uh, over at Geek and Sundry Vlogs. If you're unfamiliar with Geek and Sundry, that's Felicia Day's network. She kind of runs that shit. My impression is that Holland's essentially going to be doing a monthly movie club and uh, we kicked it off with Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Excellent pick. But if you haven't checked her out yet, uh, go ahead and check her out and um, information will be in the doobly-doo and at the end of the video. Miss Farkas, I hope you like them fuzzy. Now that I'm thoroughly embarrassed, let's get on with it. The short sale here is that a couple, Clementine and Joel, have decided to erase each other from their memory. That's really the whole thing, but the way they go into such a simple concept is beautiful. My love for this one's got to be the Baby Joel scenes, where they're misproportionate to the scene, where Jim carries a full-grown adult at child size, but it's obviously all practical because it's the set itself that's large, and then when it's filming, the women look super huge in comparison, as if they were adults to his child size adult, and um, I really love how they do that, especially the scene where Caitlin Winslet walks around the table and she seems to shrink to Jim Carrey's size as she goes, and she's actually standing under the table with him. My hated for this one is probably Elijah Wood's character stealing panties. He's just kind of creepy. I think I think I always will see Elijah Wood as the guy from Sin City now. But it was just one of a couple different storylines that we could have cut out. There's a lot going on, and uh, I would have been happy without these extra romantic storylines. The MVP of this has got to go to Jim Carrey. As much as I wanted this to go to Kate Winslet, uh, he really carries the movie. He's there more. She's not there. We don't get to see her perspective. You could do a whole other movie of her erasing him from her memory. Maybe that's why the urge for that connection is so strong because... Oh, don't fall over. Because quite frankly, they willed themselves to remember even though they don't have any memories. Or at least I like that better than Elijah Wood's character urging her on to remember him. But on to the categories. Aesthetics. A lot of this movie is just kind of boring. It's very plain buildings, and I know they did that on purpose, but it's pretty snow, yeah, but they they picked very common scenes, and even the ice, as pretty as that is, uh, the way they filmed it, it's very dark and dreary, and you don't get to see a lot of it. It's more symbolic of what Jim Carrey's character is going through is he's waiting into the dark and the unknown and I like that aspect but it's not pretty. With that said, all the scenes that weren't just plain stuff were friggin awesome. Uh, all the cutscenes, the memories, the way the memories flit and fade, uh, the point where Jim Carrey's turning Elijah Wood around, it's always the back of his head. Um, just amazing stuff and like I said the practical where they had him tiny uh, and uh, the women very large in the scene I love that aesthetics gets a 90 character development this is a really strange one for character development because normally the characters experiences are what spur their changes and we don't really see that in the real life storylines. Um, we see that with some of the side stories, but for Clementine and Joel, what we get to see from them is we get to see the very beginnings where they start to get to know each other, and we see a lot of the destruction where they fall apart, but once you forget someone, you don't have those experiences anymore, so you don't have that growth. Even a de-evolution of that character isn't really possible because you really cut and restart and that's not what you see. I, I still think there's development there in the characters, and we definitely see them want to be different people than who they were once they get told the truth about things and they're listening to the tapes and they're talking and they're trying to work things out because as far as they can tell, they were meant to be together because that connection is so strong. Now, we developed the crap out of Joel's character because we get to go through his memories from when he was a kid and we get to see every aspect of how he feels about Clementine, and regardless of all the weird bad stuff that they have in their relationship, he ultimately really cares for her, and he 
wants to do anything he possibly can to hang on to her once it becomes reality that he's going to lose her. And I really enjoyed that aspect as well. Character development gets an 88. Storyline. Kind of think the storyline was lacking because there really isn't much more than the short sale. She erases him, so he erases her, and we just get this weird trip through his mind. There's not really a beginning, middle, and end to in the traditional sense of stories. And yes, there's the beginning where they get together, they have a relationship, uh, the middle is somewhere along where it falls out and they erase each other, and the end is where they try to rediscover each other. But even just that is kind of a weak soft story. It's the concept that really makes this pop and the actors they got to deliver this. And I really, really love this movie. So it's really hard for me to say that the story is not so strong, but it's good enough. Storyline gets an eight. Compulsion. I love this movie. I love watching this. Even when I'm re-watching it and I know what's about to happen, I'm still kind of in suspense, if you want to call it that because it's a dream world. Anything could happen. So my brain goes, anything could happen. It's a dream world. And it doesn't really click in that I already know what's about to happen and that I should be bored by that. So I really appreciate this movie and I think that's credit to the actor's abilities to deliver the scenes how they do and really put in that desperation that Jim Carrey does for his character and that hope and uh, free will that Kate Winslet really puts into her character. Just laying down and looking at the ceiling and thinking about the concept is entertaining. You're going to give me a whole movie for it? Compulsion, get to 92. Now if we total that all up and we get an average of 87.5. For my wrap-up review, i got to say like my biggest disappointment with it is just all the extra stuff that we got. I want to see much more of the dream world. I want to see Clementine's dream world and uh, juxtapose it to... Uh, Joel. I could have done without Kirsten Dunst and Elijah Wood's romantic storylines. I, I think it drew away from the movie a little bit, but it gave it plausibility for why they fought, discover what's happening with them and everything. Personally, I would have liked the ending where they try to find each other and they meet up and it's almost fate like that they're going to be together. But instead, we have the ending where they find out the truth and they find out that they hated each other and uh, they want to be together in spite of that. And I think that's a beautiful thing, uh, that recognition and that willingness to fight. But it's just not my personal ending. I recommend this for anyone who can handle it. Everyone sit down and watch it. I think it's a uh, weird date night movie, but um, go ahead and check it out. So that's it for me. I'm Cameron. Have a nice day.